everybody, and welcome to the first official episode for Bernanski's vlog. Thank you so much for following along as we did the promotional materials this past week. Uh, the countdown that was a lot of fun for Austin the dog and I, as I mentioned on yesterday's countdown. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you told your friends, and you guys are all now subscribed because that way you can keep in contact with us and keep following along, contributing to the conversation. That is, of course, movie news, movie reviews, and a little bit more. We'll get into that later. Right now, it is Monday morning. This is the first time we're doing a blog, a video blog, so a vlog. So I just wanted to take a second just to give you a brief background on myself. I have been writing movie reviews for the past two years. In fact, my two year anniversary is coming up. Uh, my very first review I wrote on my WordPress account, uh, which you'll see here on this page, is going to be for The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened. This was actually a documentary by a filmmaker named John Schnepp, who I've had an opportunity of meeting uh, several times now. He's a really nice guy. So if you have an opportunity to check out The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, I definitely recommend it. Um, also, I'll go ahead and put a link for my review in the show notes below. Over the weekend, I had the opportunity, well, not over the weekend, over the past week, I had the opportunity to see three films in theaters. Those three films were Spider-Man Homecoming, Baby Driver, for a second time, and then also The Big Sick. And those reviews will be a little bit later in the show, so stay tuned for those. Uh, or you can go to, again, the WordPress blog, because that's where I write all the reviews. So if you prefer to read over watch, you have that option. I, I make it available for you. So actually, one of the reasons I started doing this was because I wanted to actually help people figure out which films they should and should not spend their hard-earned dollars on because a lot of people aren't in my position where I can go see a movie uh, before noon and it's only five bucks. I know a lot of people, a lot of you guys, you have to get a babysitter, uh, you gotta get everything squared away there. So, you know, a $5 movie for me in the morning on a weekend could end up being a $50 to $100 movie for you because of everything that goes into it. Uh, for a date uh, with babysitters, whatever, what have you. So here we go. Stay with me. I will help guide you through the films that are dollar worthy and films that you should just wait for video on demand or red box. So here we go. Over the weekend, the top five earners, according to Box Office Mojo, are as follows. From the number five to the number one. Woohoo! So number five, Transformers The Last Night brought in $6,300,000. I do not understand how this film keeps making money. This franchise is garbage. It needs to go away. Why do you people keep spending money on these films? Stop it. They're garbage. These are not good movies. They're not even about the Transformers. They're about the humans. They should be called Humans with Transform... I digress. Anyway, stop seeing these movies. Wait till they come on video on demand. Then go check them out. Second, uh, number four is Wonder Woman at $10,135,000. I can't tell you how happy I am that now in its, I believe, sixth week, Wonder Woman is still in the top five. This movie was fantastic. Definitely spend your hard-earned dollars on this. Go out and see it, contribute to that. Uh, we'll get into uh, Wonder Woman a little bit later here as well. Uh, next is Baby Driver at $12,750,000, coming in at number three. I love Baby Driver. I love Baby Driver so much, it's right here on my wall. Now, this film, it's an original film by Edgar Wright, original story, characters. It, it's, a very, it's, spl it's absolutely splendid. I cannot recommend this movie enough. It is my favorite movie of the year so far. Check it out. Definitely worth your money. Okay, coming in at number two is Despicable Me 3. Not two. Coming in at two is Despicable Me 3. Brrr, that was weird. And that came in at $33,998,875. I have not seen this movie, but I did come into some very reliable sources who saw it. My nieces and nephews who are all under the age of 12, and they really enjoyed it. So if you have kids that are under the age of 12, they might enjoy it as well. I don't know. My nieces and nephews said it was funny. So you can check that out. That's probably a good family movie. I enjoyed the first two. Minions was okay. Um, I do plan on seeing Despicable Me 3. But I will probably see this at an 11 o'clock showing when I don't need to worry about children screaming, laughing, spilling drinks, knocking over popcorn, constantly asking to go to the bathroom, and making the overall movie experience rather difficult. So I will probably see this at a later showing. So if you're like me and you don't have children, I always recommend you go see these films if you like animated movies later in the evening. So keep that in mind. 
Now, the number one spot, no surprise here, Spider-Man Homecoming coming swinging in. Ooh, see what I did there? Swinging in with 117,000, 100, $117,015,000. Now, I enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, I'll probably see it a second time just because I want to catch some of the, the uh, subtleties that I missed as far as Easter eggs go. But I wasn't overwhelmed with it. It was fine. It was just an okay Spider-Man movie. Um, I think my favorite part of the whole film was Michael Keaton. He's probably the second best villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right next to Tom Hiddleston's Loki. So we have a blue collar worker who's also a family man that gets screwed out of a contract. So he's not a bad guy just because he wants to be a bad guy. He's a bad guy because he sees that that's the best way to provide for his family and to ensure that they have a positive and good life going forward. So it's very nuanced. Michael Keaton does a great job. I recommend you go see this movie in theaters. If you don't like superhero films, skip it because this is a superhero film. It takes place in high school. There's a great little reference to uh, an 80s film that I grew up on and I think a lot of you guys may have grown up on. Uh, younger viewers, you may not have, but you probably still enjoy it. That's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, so watch for that. In the movie, they pretty much knock you over the head with the reference. And in case you don't see it, then they bring it up right after that scene just to hit you over the head with it to drive home the point that this is an homage to Ferris Bueller's Day Off for that one scene only though. Okay, so just to recap, before we move on to notable mentions, we have Transformers last night coming in at number five. Skip this movie, stop spending money on these films. Number four is Wonder Woman, definitely go see that, that's fantastic. Number three is Baby Driver, favorite film of the year so far, please go see that movie and then go see it again. Number two, Despicable Me 3, if you have kids, they'll probably enjoy it. If you don't, go see a later showing. Don't be that weird, creepy guy that walks into the theater alone. And number one, Spider-Man Homecoming. I recommend it, it's a good film, I had a lot of fun, I'm gonna see it again. So notable mentions, let's move on here in my notes. Right now, Wonder Woman is the third highest grossing domestic film of the year, and that is only behind Beauty and the Beast and just slightly behind Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And right now, Wonder Woman is on pace to surpass Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 uh, and become the number one summer film and the number two overall. Now, that's not to say that it's going to stay in that position because we still have Thor Ragnarok, we still have Justice League, and we still have Star Wars Episode Eight all coming out in November and December. So we still have some big hitters that need to step up to this plate and see what they can do. But right now, Wonder Woman is poised to be the number two film of the year domestically, and I think that's pretty great. Uh, if you wanna see my review on Beauty and the Beast, you can do that as well. That's also on the WordPress. Now, Baby Driver, also notable mentions, Baby Driver has cleared its budget already. Uh, it had a $34 million budget, and it's already made $56 million approximately. So. Great job, Edgar Wright, on that. That's a great success for you and uh, the studios. And then also, great job everybody getting out to see this movie. It's an original story and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great heist movie, uh, great cars chases. It's all done practically, well, it's not all. Most of it's done practically, so what you see as a car chase is an actual car chase. Really good stuff. So let's go ahead and move on from there. Now we're gonna break into the news segment, so stay tuned. <music> There's a lot of great news stories this week. We're gonna cover a few here. What I do is I pick out anywhere from four to six stories that I think were of note, and we'll kind of cover that here. Now, uh, if you want to hear about other stories, other news stories like that, I recommend that you start following the trades online. Twitter is a great source for that. Uh, you should also be subscribed to the Twitter page for this blog, for this vlog, which is Bernanski's vlog, as you can see here. So definitely check that out. Or if you prefer Facebook, uh, you can find the trades on Facebook as well. And you can also find us on Facebook and you should like that page and stay subscribed there so you can contact us and reach us. And again, that page is right here. So today in the news, 35 years ago, Disney released Tron. So happy birthday, Tron, 35 years old. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Tron. I enjoyed Tron Legacy. The movie Tron sparked a fandom in me that continues today. So uh, job well done, Disney, there, because I'm a big fan of Tron. In fact, I just watched Tron yesterday uh, on VOD, on Video On Demand, and it still holds up. It's still goofy 80s science fiction graphics, but I love it. And uh, definitely recommend you guys revisit that, because it's just, it holds a little place right here in my heart. 
All right, so I hope everybody who's watching this, who is going to be attending Shanghai Disney, enjoys the Tron Light Cycle Power Run ride. I'm very jealous you guys have that. And um, if Disney, if anybody at Disney is watching this, get this ride in the United States. Why is it only in Shanghai Disney? Bring it to Anaheim, bring it to Orlando. It's Tron for crying out loud. We want the light cycle ride. All right, moving on with more news. Mission Impossible 6 has finished principal photography in its second location of New Zealand, and it's still on track for the July 2018 release date. Now, Mission Impossible 6 is gonna be reuniting Tom Cruise with Rebecca Ferguson, Simon Pegg, uh, Ving Rhames, and Michelle Moynihan. And also returning is Alec Baldwin. Now, I have been a big fan of the Mission Impossible franchise, so I'm excited that they are continuing forward with this series. Um, I'm also curious to see kind of what role Alec Baldwin is gonna be playing. I'm hoping it's more predominant than it was in the last one. He was kind of an ancillary character in that it worked for me, but I would like to see more because Alec Baldwin is a really talented actor. When you, when you give him a role, he commits to it, and that's pretty great. So it works out well for us as fans because we get a good performance, and it works out for Alec Baldwin because he gets a paycheck. Ka-ching! So I'm looking forward to Mission Impossible 6. I'm looking forward to July of next year. Um, that's all pretty exciting. I don't really have anything negative to say about the franchise itself. They keep getting better. Uh, there was a couple missteps early in the franchise, but they've since corrected that. And now we've had a really solid few films. And the addition of Simon Pegg has been great comedic relief. So I'm really happy he's returning. And I also like the swagger that Ving Rhames brings as that kind of badass character. So that's always nice to see too. Moving on, we have Sam Jackson confirmed for Nick Fury in the Captain Marvel film. Scheduled for release in 2019. Why are we talking about this? It's, 2000, it's 2017, two years away. Still important, it's Nick Fury. It's the Marvel Cinematic Universe and its continuity continuing forward, that's why. So since we don't know the plot details of this film yet, it's possible that Sam Jackson, as Nick Fury, is gonna be reprising his role in a smaller part. Um, also, it's possible this could be like a flashback sequence to something that happened with Carol Danvers because last we saw Nick Fury in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He wasn't really Nick fury -y. He was just kind of a guy hiding in the shadows, trying to figure things out, trying to work with the information, kind of subverting things and being very spy-y. So we don't know if he's gonna be modern day Nick Fury or if this is gonna be flashbacks or anything like that. But it's still nice to see him coming back. Um, Carol Danvers is obviously a big part as military for her background in the stories. So I'm sure that that'll play into it at some point. Um, as we get closer to the release, I'm confident more news is going to drop to paint a better picture as to kind of what's going on with his character and how he fits into the overall plot and story of this film. So stay tuned for that. Um, we should be getting more information, I would imagine, at Comic-Con that's coming up here in the next two weeks. It's possible we won't because, again, it's 2019, so they may wait until next year's Com San Diego Comic-Con. So we'll go there. Now, Next up is the Geostorm trailer. That dropped, we have a new one. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen it yet. If you haven't seen it, definitely check this trailer out after this video concludes. Uh, because I don't even know if this is a real movie. I, it feels like a hoax, almost. Because if this movie is going to be as bad as the trailer makes it look like it's going to be, I am very excited to see this movie. It looks like they're embracing the fact that they know it's gonna be garbage and they're gonna make it entertaining garbage. And I will go see a film that embraces its garbaginess wholeheartedly. I'm there, I'm getting a ticket. It might not be opening night, but definitely opening weekend. I'm gonna go sit through this thing because if you know your film's garbage and you're just trying to have a fun time, count this guy in because I wanna have a good time too. So if the Geostorm trailer is accurate to the film, I'm pretty excited about how bad this movie is going to be because uh, I would I enjoy a, a celebrated bad movie, definitely. So check out the Geostorm trailer. Put your comments below. Let me know what you thought about the trailer after you watched it. Did you like it? Did you not? Um, are you excited to see it because you think it'll be a good movie? Are you excited to see it because it looks like it's just going to be something that belongs on the sci-fi channel with Sharknado? Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this trailer. It, But put your comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, and then we can continue the discussion there through the comments board. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them 2 has begun filming. Um, there's no actual title for this film yet. So it's nice that they've already started filming. It would be even nicer if they gave us a title. 
but I guess that's not really important. So as it continues, I'm sure we'll figure things out more. I don't know if you saw the first Fantastic Beasts. Uh, again, you can read my review for that on the WordPress. That'll be in below. Um, it's It was fun. It was a fun movie. It was definitely a departure from the Harry Potter franchise. It was much lighter in tone, uh, much more uh, fun, I guess would be the, the descriptive word to describe that. It was a period piece. Um, I'm a sucker for period pieces. And so seeing magic in like New York in the 20s or 30s, like that was fun for me. So yeah, I don't know. Check out my review. Leave your comments below if you liked it. Uh, if you didn't like it, let me know. I know a lot of Harry Potter fans were like, what is this movie? What am I watching? I don't blame you. I'm a Harry Potter fan myself. I have a Harry Potter shirt. I rock the Harry Potter. But, you know, it's, it's not every movie is for everybody. All film is subjective. I've been an artist my whole life. I get it. You like things, you don't like things. It is what it is. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right, next up, and the last bit of news for the day, more Tom Cruise. It's Tom Cruise Day today. Top Gun has a sequel. Now, Paramount Studios officially announced that we are getting a sequel to Top Gun 33 years later. We didn't even know that we wanted a sequel, but apparently we did. And 33 years later, we are getting this Top Gun sequel. Now, Tom Cruise, apparently, now this is not confirmed by Paramount. This is just what Tom Cruise said in an interview. Uh, he said that it's going to be called Top Gun Maverick. So that's cool, because his character name was Maverick. Um, and apparently the synopsis or basic plot is going to explore the world of drone technology while exploring the end of the era of dogfighting. Now, if you remember the first Top Gun movie, that was pretty much all about the dogfights. Not actual dogfights like dogs rawr, 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 fighting each other, but dogfights in the sky with airplanes going... <laughs> Like that. Dramatically different than... Rah, 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 rah. So, the end of the era of dogfighting with use of drone technology could be cool. It, it is a relevant topic to kind of what's going on today with drone technology and everything else. So, sure, why not? It's Tom Cruise. I like Tom Cruise movies. He has not always made great movies, but they've been entertaining. And the one thing I can say about Tom Cruise is if Tom Cruise is in the movie, Tom Cruise is committing to that movie. The movie might not be great, but his performance will be. So I'm excited about this. You tell me Tom Cruise is in a movie, likely chance I'll be there opening weekend because I have faith in Tom Cruise, I trust. All right, so let's go ahead and move forward into movie reviews. Like I said, we got three films we're gonna be covering today, uh, and that is gonna be Baby Driver, <whistles> favorite film of the year so far, The Big Sick, and Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> First up, we have Baby Driver. Now this is an original story by Edgar Wright. It takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. Most of it was all filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. And a lot of it was done with practical effects. And when I say practical effects, I mean the car chases that you see are actual car chases that are happening on screen. It's a throwback to me to something similar to like the 1970s or the 80s action films where you'd see like cars like going through cities like Bullet or something like that, where you have like real cars crashing into real things and it's pretty awesome. The basic synopsis is uh, this kid, Baby, his parents are killed in a car accident. He gets tinnitus, which is a ringing in the ears. And because he doesn't have any parents, he kind of ventures into a road of, uh, of misfortune. So he's heisting cars uh, and everything like that. And that's how he meets Kevin Spacey. Uh, Kevin Spacey is kind of like the, uh, the, the ghost in the machine, if you will. He's kind of running the operations that Baby drives for. He never works with the same crew twice, but Baby is always his driver, which is pretty interesting to me. The film overall is written very well. The characters are all uniquely special, so you don't ever feel like you have the same character in the same scene. Uh, you always feel like you have six characters in one scene, and I really like that. I like the diversity that the cast gives. I think this might be John Hamm's best performance. John Hamm was my favorite character in the movie, because you actually see a full arc with his personality of going from uh, a guy who's just a guy who's just a bank robber, basically, all the way into this guy who is seeking revenge and is completely just mad and driven by the color red, as is described in the film. 
definitely recommend you guys check this film out. It is my favorite film of the year so far. The music in it is fantastic. The movie itself almost feels like a musical because in a musical, the music actually moves the story along and helps drive the plot. This is the exact same kind of thing, except there's no songs in it that the characters are singing. It's just that the music itself is actually helping to drive the plot forward. So while a song is playing, you will see the characters kind of moving in rhythm to that song. When a song is playing, if it's shots being fired by guns, those shots are being fired in the rhythm of the song. The whole movie is based around the music, which makes it very unique to what's happening in cinema right now as far as what's being played in theaters. I haven't seen a movie like this before that I can recall, and I love the originality of it, so definitely, definitely check this movie out. Baby Driver gets all the high fives. Loved it. All right, next up we have Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, Spider-Man Homecoming is the sixth, ooh, sixth, we're gonna call it sixth. We're not gonna count that weird version in like the 70s or 80s where he's Spider-Man slinging ropes. That's out. We're done. Hands are washed. I got no cards left. We're out of this game. So this is officially the sixth Spider-Man movie. We had three with Tobey Maguire, we had two with Andrew Garfield, and now we've got one with Tom Holland. Now this film takes place in a modern setting. Uh, it goes back in time to the Marvel Cinematic Universe right after the events of the first Avengers film. And then it also jumps forward to Civil War and then right after Civil War. So there's a little bit of time hopping, so you do have to pay attention because otherwise you will get lost in the story as to where are we right now in the timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Are we pre? Are we post? What's going on? Just pay attention. The movie does a really good job of guiding you through each segment. And for that, I give it all the kudos. Now, Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. The Vulture, is played by Michael Keaton. He was my favorite character in this film. He's nuanced, he's layered. I couldn't get enough of this bad guy. Spoiler alert! I am thankful they did not kill him. Let me repeat that. I am thankful they did not kill him. I love this character so much. I am looking forward to any potential for him to return. Now, I don't know. I think Michael Keaton's only contracted for one film, so he may not return. Michael Keaton, if you're watching this, please do all the movie-going fans a favor, return as the Vulture. Now, there's a post credit scene that I'm not going to spoil, but it does play into why I like this character so much and why I enjoyed his villainy so much. He's not a bad guy for being a bad guy. He's a bad guy because that was the only way he saw to provide for his family, which makes his character complex and also a little bit more dangerous because he's doing it for his family. So, I really enjoyed Michael Keaton's performance. Tom Holland was great as Spider-Man. Jacob Batalon, I hope I pronounced that last name right, as his best friend Ned, was also a surprise to me. I was a little worried from the previews that they were gonna kind of be like, ha ha ha, I'm Ned, I'm the joke guy, I'm your comedic relief. They weren't. He is comic relief to a point, but he's also a real genuine character that you can identify with. If you've ever been a best friend to somebody and you're excited for what's going on in their life, there is a moment in this film, I guarantee you, that you'll look at Ned and be like, I got you, I got you. So definitely watch for Ned's character moments. They're great. He likes to be what he calls the man in the chair, uh, which is the guy behind the scenes, kind of helping the hero out. He's the guy on the computer going, okay, go this way, go that way. He plays that role to perfection. Also, he's got a pretty sweet hat. So pay attention to that. The other main characters in the film all do a great job of making me believe that this really was a high school movie. I enjoyed the homage to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That was great, so watch for that. And if you miss it, the very next scene that happens right after that homage is a scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, referencing what you just saw. So if you miss it, they'll smack you on the head and be like, ah, that's what you just watched. So pay attention, it's a good time. There's a lot of humor in it. I was really happy with John Favreau returning as Happy Hogan. Obviously, I love Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark Iron Man, but more importantly, I was impressed with how much Happy Hogan was in this film. John Favreau is great in general. He's been one of my favorite actors, writers, and directors since Swingers back in the 90s. I'm old. But outside of that, he's still great. Everything he does, I have been enjoying. Uh, I, I just couldn't get enough of Happy Hogan in this movie. I was so, so glad that he had the role he had. Almost as much time on screen as Robert Downey Jr. Surprise me, happy surprise. I recommend that you guys go out and see Spider-Man Homecoming. Is it a great film? No, it's not a great film. Is it a fun film? Yes. Is it entertaining? Definitely. And that's the type of summer blockbuster you want from a Spider-Man film. You won't walk out of the movie disappointed. You will walk out smiling. You probably will be talking about it and laughing with your friends if you go see it with people. All right, next up we have The Big Sick, which takes place in Chicago. 
uh, and then eventually it moves to New York. Now, The Big Sick is a romantic comedy that is about the lives of two people, Kumail and Emily. Now, these two, it's a story about how they met, how they fell in love, how they got married, but there are some complications along the way. As the title suggests, uh, The Big Sick, it's not a pun on the word sick. It literally deals with an illness that Emily contracts throughout the course of the film and the way that uh, Kumail's character has to deal with it and Emily's family, friends, and then what is it like for Kumail uh, and how he has to deal with his family who is staunchly religious and is kind of set in an old pattern of thought, an old school thought pattern where they look at life as you're this type of person so you marry this type of person and this is what our religion says so this is how our family lives. It felt more like uh, a modern version, uh, a sad, funny version of my Big Fat Greek Wedding. Um, in a sense, when I walked out of the theater, I was like, wow, that was a lot like my Big Fat Greek Wedding. But it had an, a, a different element to it because my Big Fat Greek Wedding is primarily just a romantic comedy, whereas The Big Sick, it takes you up and then it takes you down. It takes you up, lets you ride that high for a while, and then takes you down. There's a lot of sad moments. There's a lot of funny moments. The characters are all great. The characters are genuine, they seem real. What you're watching on screen, it is based on a true story. And fortunately for us, the actors in this film all are able to give it that real, uh, genuine feel to the film. Now on my, my review, I'll be putting that it is genuine, it's heartfelt, it's touching, it's sad, it's comedic. It is honest, at its core, this is an honest film about what life would be like in that situation. I really was touched by this film. I was really moved. When I walked out of the theater, I was very happy I made the decision to see it. Uh, it is available now, wide release. Uh, when it came out, it was only in, I believe, LA and New York, possibly Chicago, because like I said, it takes place in Chicago. Most of the film, almost the entirety of the film, takes place in Chicago. So I definitely recommend you get out and see The Big Sick. It's a perfect date movie, uh, but do be prepared, because like I said, it takes you up, it takes you down. It's a sad, funny movie, and I can't recommend it enough. So I'm definitely giving the high fives to the big sick. All right, now that we've covered the movie reviews, let's get into what's coming out this week, both in the theaters as well as Blu-ray. So on Blu-ray, we have The Fate of the Furious is coming out this week, as well as The Lost City of Z. I didn't see The Lost City of Z, but I did see Fate of the Furious. And again, if you would like to read my thoughts on that film, you can go to my WordPress account and you can find it there. Now, as far as uh, major motion pictures, uh, we have this weekend, War for the Planet of the Apes. I'm excited. I've liked this franchise. It's been fun. Andy Serkis does great work um, in the motion capture. I, I think he's pioneering. Uh, film and the way it's made and I think when people look back maybe 20 years from now when they look back on how motion capture started I think Andy Serkis's name is gonna be right up there uh, as one of the major forces to help drive this type of technology um, and I, I think that's pretty great because I think we've had some pretty impressive advancements in motion capture and a lot of that I believe is because of Andy Serkis because he commits to wearing all of all of the buttons and the colors and the, the CGI outfits to make sure that we get these characters and these roles to uh, what I think is a pretty great performance. So we're looking forward to War for the Planet of the Apes and more Andy Serkis. And then also, like I said, uh, on DVD, Fate of the Furious, as well as The Lost City of Z. So go ahead and check those out too if you want. And again, if you want to see my thoughts on Fate of the Furious, you just go ahead and visit my WordPress and we can find it there. I do want to mention that I will be at D23 this weekend. I'm pretty excited about that. I have the three-day pass. Uh, so I will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you guys see me, wave at me. I'm going to have, um, I'll have my Nikon camera with me. I'll be there. I'll be doing a little bit of video. Uh, we'll be photographing a lot. So if you're there and you're in cosplay, get at me and let me take a photo with you guys and we can go ahead and have some fun at D23 in Anaheim this weekend. I am excited about the live animation <clears throat> or the live, the live movie panel covering Star Wars, covering Marvel and what Disney has to offer. I'm also excited about the Disney animation and Pixar panel uh, to see kind of what's on the table as far as animation goes for this moving forward into this next year. 
Thanks everybody for watching this first official vlog, the launch of Bernanski's vlog. Thank you so much. If you guys enjoyed what you saw today, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed what we covered and what we talked about today. If you have opinions on any of the topics that were covered in this first episode, leave those comments below. Let me know what you thought. Let's get the conversation started. Let's talk movies. Again, I'll be at D23 all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Get at your boy. I'll have my camera. Let's have some fun. All right, everybody. Have a great Monday. If you're in a warmer climate like I am, be sure to drink plenty of water. All right, be safe out there. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Monday.